Okay, in this video, I'm going to do a little review on vertex form. It would be very helpful for you if you haven't, if you are unaware of what a quadratic function looks like and when it's drawn, to watch some video. I think I've done one on uh, transformations because if you can get an idea of what the graph is doing, this explanation is way easier to understand. Now, when I have a quadratic function, of course, it is in a parabola format. So I end up getting sort of it helps if you actually have your pen turned on if you're going to explain things. I'm going to end up with sort of this overall look. And there's a few features that you need to uh, be aware of, like the line that breaks it in half is referred to the, this is your axis of symmetry. I'm going to draw it very badly in order to maintain any level of speed. This point here, the uh, main focus point of where it starts and stops is referred to as the vertex. I may have a point that's uh, the bottom. So this one has a minimum value because the smallest point would be down here. The maximum value would be if it was actually flipped upside down. So sometimes you can have sort of this thing going on, which in that case you would have a maximum value because it's the biggest value in the whole graph, that kind of thing. So just FYI. Now in vertex form, it looks like this. It says F of X, which you could substitute for y if you're graphing, equals a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k. That's a lot of letters, but let's break them out into what they really are. f of x and x would just be uh, my output and input variables. And I wrote that in some weird way. I don't know why. So let me just do this. So f of x would be my output, whereas x would be my input. So they really don't tell me anything about the graph. It's just the fact that uh, other than I can plug one in and get the other, so it just tells me it's a function, basically. My a value tells me something about stretching or compressing. So when I get down here, you'll see stretch or compress. So I get my information about what the graph's going to do based on the value of a. So it's the number in front of the x squared term. Does it become sort of uh, thinner? Am I pulling the graph or am I pressing it down? So I get that piece of information from a. What it does for me in the end of all things is it helps me find my maximum and minimum values and that sort of thing. Um, my egg h value, goodness I can't talk today, my h value generally speaks to the idea of any sort of uh, horizontal shift. So whether I move it left or right, it'll actually identify an axis of symmetry for me in a minute. And my uh, k value refers to any vertical shift. So if I took this drawing here, and sort of did this with it, all of a sudden it goes, you know, it's much thinner and it's over here. Any sort of motion that it moved this direction would have to do with H. Any sort of motion up and down would do K. And the uh, information that I can get from the combination of those things I can find by putting them together, which is kind of nice. So the question states, what's the axis of symmetry? Or maybe I need to find the axis of symmetry. Well, I said that the axis of symmetry would be like this line down the middle, and it sh moves a lot. Like it up or down won't affect the, I could move this one up here. The symmetry axis is still the same. So it's a left or right change. So I need to look at this variable right here to make a statement about the axis of symmetry. So the axis of symmetry is um, x is equal to h. So I can say that this line, in this case, x is equal to, say it's 4 or whatever, uh, then I would pick the 4. The issue here, I'm going to go ahead and pre-warn you, is that the formula has negative h. So if in your questions it says minus h or minus 4 or whatever right there, you can say, okay, cool, I know my axis of symmetry is sort of at that number. But if it's x plus a number, you're going to have to switch the sign. You'll see in a second, but I'm just pre-warning you, be very careful about the fact that this minus is here. Let's talk about the, the vertex. Now, the vertex is a combination of me shifting it to the right and then me shifting it up or down. So I can say that my vertex value is really my h value in combination with my k value. Why I would choose to separate it visually with the same color doesn't make any sense, but I often don't make any sense.
So there, HK, it sort of gives you that nice uh, axis, or the nice vertex that I'm looking for because it'll show an opposite shift. And if you've seen the video on transformations, you'll know what that means. Now, maximum and minimum values, I can find that piece of information uh, sort of based on my K value. So it's either going to be, um, so in this case, it's going to be that my value is equal to k, or I could say in another way that whatever the k value is sort of tells me what the um, maximum or minimum value happens to be. It also helps if I'm paying close attention to whether or not the a value is positive or negative. If the a value is positive, so it's going up, I have a positive A value. If I have a maximum value, so it's as big as it gets, then it's negative A, just so you know. So those are the kind of things that you're looking for. You're going to base it off of what one it is based on this, and then its value is just going to be set at that K, whatever it happens to be. Let's look at a few. Maybe it'll make more sense. So I go into my sample problems. I'll get one that says y equals negative x minus 5 squared minus 3. And the nice thing is I, I'm, I'm in good shape here because my 5 is actually minus 5. And in the formula, it's minus h. So that's perfect. I can get all the information I need much more quickly than I would if I had to go around and fiddle with some stuff. So to find the vertex, all I do here, since it's already minus, is I pick 5 and negative 3. And graphically, that would make sense because this one would tell me to go uh, down 3 and it would tell me to go to the right 5 so I'd be somewhere in this general vicinity uh, and that is 5 and negative 3 so the vertex is perfect. The second case uh, the axis of symmetry. Well it would be whatever the vertical shift is and since it's uh, the minus 5 thing is in the perfect form for this formula I could say that the axis of symmetry is x is equal to positive 5. And by the way it's just sort of going to look um, it'll be actually going down, which will help me in the next one. Because my a value is negative, it's actually going to go down from here. So I do have a minimum value, or sorry, maximum value. Losing my mind. A maximum value, and that maximum value is somewhere in the vicinity of negative 3. Because that's as big as it gets. And finally, I don't know why I decided to try to make four with a Roman numeral. I need to look at my domain and range. Now, I'm hardly ever, you hardly ever limit a domain value for a parabola, so my domain is all real numbers. Sometimes when I get to do that, I put darn there. Um, on the other side of it, there's range. Now, range is limited. Remember, domain is like how much it goes left to right. Range is how much it goes up or down, and there is definitively a point that locks out that range value. You can't be any greater than negative 3. So I can say that my range value is all reals less than or equal to negative 3. That way it shows it goes all the way down. It tells me tons of useful information about, you know, whatever and whatnot. So it should be relatively helpful about how that goes. Uh, now, from the next one, I've got a little bit of differentiation to it, just in the sense that uh, it doesn't match the formula. This is a plus. If that is the case, my absolute suggestion to you is that you go ahead and make it in your head minus negative, or you might want to do like this into minus negative 120 from being a plus. That way you can constantly pull that negative there. You don't have to, and eventually you won't ever have to do it, but it might be a good visual cue to do now. So in this case, my vertex would be negative 120 and negative 240. But if I hadn't done any sort of changes, I would have probably just picked, well, 120. But obviously it's not that, because this is that counterintuitive relationship where I would think I would go right to graph it, but I actually graph to the left. This graph sort of looks like this. It's going to go to the left, it's going to go down to 240, and it's just sort of going to follow the regular x squared model all the way up and on forever. So there's that thing, and you can see the vertex is obviously locked in there. My axis of symmetry, once again, is affected only by my horizontal shift. And since my horizontal shift is actually to the left, I need to say that x is equal to negative 120. For my maximum minimum values, this one's actually going up, so I have a minimum value, and that minimum value is negative 240. 
And then for number four, my domain is, of course, all real numbers. And my range would be everything, essentially, above negative 240. So I would say all reals or all real numbers greater than or equal to negative 240. And that's supposed to be a 4, not a 9. And that's it. So that's how you set them up. Uh, if you watch the graphing thing, it probably meant a lot more. It made a lot more sense to you. But that's you know, vertex form is pretty useful. It tells you a lot of information that you can use without having to move anything around. It's already there for you. The only real concern is making sure that if your questions say x plus a number, that you go ahead and change that to minus negative. That way, it makes it easier to plug in for all those values, and then you're good to go. So, hope this helped.